Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Xu Sanzong uh, from the First Authority the Hospital. I'm an orthopedic department, and uh, today we are going to discuss uh, the bone tumor. We know a lot of beautiful things in our lives, for example, very beautiful flowers. And uh, we have good views for the seas, and uh, when we do invocation, we were so happy. And we, okay, we also see the clouds, the skies, the mountains, they all so beautiful. Also, our city is so beautiful. However, bad things always happen. That means tumor. Now, that was very horrible. That was a disaster. And uh, the uh, introduction of the bone tumors, first we should know the, the definition of this uh, kind of disease. First, the bone tumor should be occurred in the bone, of course, and uh, the second, it was originated from various uh, components of the bone. And no matter it is primary, it is secondary, or it's metastatic. <clears throat> and bone tumors can be divided into benign and malignant. Uh, we know benign tumors is much easier to treat and uh, the prognosis is uh, quite good. Uh, but the malignant one uh, was a bad one. Uh, it's usually developed very rapidly and they have poor prognosis and high mortality. Malignant bone tumor can be primary. Uh, it can also be a secondary or metatastic bone tumor. Often comes from the breast, and uh, that was the first position. The first of all is breast, so you should remember this. And the uh, thyroid, and uh, the kidney, the lung, and uh, the prostate uh, was the most uh, uh, frequent places for the metatastic bone tumor. Uh, and the talk today, we have key con content of this today. We are going to discuss the clinical manifestations of the bone tumors and uh, the differential diagnosis of benign and malignant bone tumors. Uh, first, we look into the classification of bone tumors. And uh, in our country, we have own uh, classifications that was published in 9883, and uh, this kind of classification was featured by these uh, characters. The first one we divided in uh, our tumor into benign and uh, benign aggressive or malignant tumors. And the second line is the giant cell tumors of the bone, uh, which is the typical aggressive benign tumor. And uh, the so one was the classification according to the clinical and uh, pathological combined with X-ray. And WHO also has its own classifications, and that was very worldwide uh, classification was used. And uh, it was uh, first published in the 1972, and uh, uh, it was uh, changed in the 1993, and uh, was finally uh, we have the latest version of these uh, 2002. Uh, we should know the incidence of the bone tumors. First, uh, in January, uh, bone sarcomas account for only 0.2% of all neoplasmas. And uh, cancer registered with uh, histological stratification indicates that osteosarcoma is the most common primary malignant tumor of all, accounting for approximately 35% uh, of cases, followed by chondrosarcoma, which was 25%, uh, and the uvus sarcoma was 16%. Uh, and uh, the chondromers and the malignant fibrous histocytoma um, that means MFH are much less frequent, uh, which was constituted approximately 8 or 5% of the bone tumors. So uh, in this slide, we could conclude that the most of the bone tumors uh, may be uh, the malignant one was the uh, sarcoma, uh, bone sarcoma was 35%. And uh, 
Bone tumors was uh, have age and site descriptions, and and the age specific frequency and uh, incidence rate of bone sarcoma as group uh, clearly by model. Uh, that means it has two peaks. The first well defined peak occurred during the seven decades of life. You can see this or uh, this uh, bone sarcoma, and the first peak is here. Uh, is running to the second decades of life, and uh, occurs during the uh, the second peak. We call the patient older than sixty. Uh, we run this. Uh, we we you know you can't six it, that is second peak. Second peak is here is about uh, sixty five or seventy years old, and that was uh, by model of this osteosarcoma. And uh, osteosarcoma occurs predominantly in patients younger than age 20. And in this group, was 80% occur in wrong bones of extremities. And in this age group, a small population of cases involve other parts of skeleton, such as cranial face bones and the spine and the pelvis. Osteosarcoma in patients older than uh, 50. Osteosarcoma of the extremity bones make up only 50% of the case. And uh, in this group, the pelvic and the cranial face are each count only about 20% of the cases. And uh, in the anatomic side, the uh, metaphysics. Uh, is always the black row is very rich and slow and the cell growth is the most active one. So the metaphysis uh, is attempt to occur the osteosarcoma is much uh, more than the epiphysial. So we, we know epiphysial is very affected in, in this kind of tumor. Uh, so we look into the chondrosarcoma. It, it is quite different from the osteosarcoma. Uh, Chondrosarcoma have age-specific incidence rates shown in a gradual increase up to age 75. So that was by not a bimodal one. The age-adjusted rate uh, show little differences by sex and race. And more than 50% of chondrosarcomas occur in the wrong bones of the extremities. The other major signs of the environment, environment are the pelvis and ribs. The latter site and uh, the stone are high risk sites for the malignant cardiac tumors. Um, and uh, the human sarcoma. Human have uh, epidemiological features uh, similar to those of osteosarcoma. But why osteosarcoma tend to occur in the metaphysical area of wrong bones and the skeletary in nature patients, and particularly in the knee region, uh, human sarcoma tend to arise in the diaphysis. Uh, that was a different position uh, from the osteosarcoma. And to uh, the age specific relative frequency and incidence mirror those of osteosarcoma with the major peak occurring during the seven decades of life. Observe uh, there is a rapid decrease in incidence after age 20 uh, cases still can be seen in uh, all age groups. Unlike osteosarcoma, Human sarcoma is reported to occur almost exactly in the right uh, population. And we share a picture of this uh, uh, swelling and mass. Uh, this is a quite a good, uh, very big mass in, the, uh, in your hand. You see, here is a mass. And uh, this picture shows an osteosarcoma. Uh, including the swelling in the distal femur. Uh, we, we know this is uh, the femur part, this is the tibial part, 
and uh, in the distal femur, the areas are uh, good mass and swelling, and the soft tissue is poor removal, uh, consistency uh, ranging from tough to hard, and uh, hypersemia of the skin and uh, the marked man skin uh, Also, we show a picture of osteochondroma. Um, this osteochondroma is quite hard and uh, smooth nodule uh, swelling of the distal femur and uh, skin and uh, soft tissue are easily movable and uh, the knee joint is freely movable. Uh, we should know the second clinical manifestations. Uh, we call it pain and tenderness. And pain is the most obvious symptoms of the rapidly growth tumor. It is caused uh, by periosteal distraction. We, we know pain always uh, can be a light pain or a heavy one or it was uh, originally light one and uh, gradually it aggravated to the heavy pain and it can be intermittent pain and uh, all continued pain. Also we have a very character-like uh, uh, symptoms, we call it uh, nocturnal pain. Nocturnal pain and uh, rest pain is the main differences from the pain caused by trauma and inflammation. Uh, always in clinic you see a nocturnal pain, uh, you should uh, first consider a uh, tumor. And uh, the third clinical manifestation is dysfunction and uh, the limitation of the movement. Uh, the fourth one was pathological fracture. And uh, we also have general symptoms for the bone tumors. This uh, general symptoms was mainly consist of causation and loss of weight. Uh, they are late signs in malignant tumors and uh, will be absent in nearly all cases of benign bone lesions. Uh, this picture shows a human sacrum. The urine segment is here, as of the proximal humerus and uh, presenting as tertiary elastic tense and uh, unsurrated lesion with shiny skin. You know, this skin is very shiny. It's shiny skin is the edema of this uh, part. And the green white background, and we can note the map veins and the skin direction. And this picture is, uh, shows the dysfunction and the symptoms of the oppressive. Uh, we can see a tumor here. It, it, it uh, can oppress if the uh, spinal cord and uh, cause the dysfunction of the spurs lower extremities. And this picture shows a pathological fracture. Maybe not very clearly, and uh, we, we saw the fracture lines is here is in the uh, proximal humerus. And uh, clinical manifestation, uh, we have age characteristic things, and so the bone tumors are different in different age groups. Primary bone tumors is more often the code in adolescence. Human sarcoma can always occur in their children. Uh, we know it's years always uh, less than 20. And the osteosarcoma is adolescent one. It's always the 10 years to 25 years uh, in the first peak of this age. And uh, the giant cell tumor, uh, always a young adult, in other words, 20 to 40 years old, uh, we usually first consider giant cell. And the medieval malignant and more than 50 years old always. Uh, this picture shows their different the size of the tumor. Uh, we know the uh, GCT is giant cell tumor uh, in, in here, uh, and uh, we got a, a bone system in the, is here and different things. So we got we got a, a diaphysia and uh, the metaphysia and uh, the epiphysia. Uh, this is a chondral sarcoma, it always rise here. Okay. 
And uh, when we encourage the disease, we should know the diagnosis, how to diagnose the bone tumor. In general, diagnosis of bone tumors must emphasize the combination of the clinical manufacturing and the image data and uh, the pathology. The uh, correct diagnosis can be made after comprehensive analysis. Should we pay attention to several issues distinguished? Uh, first, we should know uh, uh, bone tumor. Bone tumor. And uh, uh, if this was a bone tumor, uh, we should consider if this was a benign or a malignant bone tumor, uh, which one is? And uh, the second, uh, we should, uh, the third one, we should consider the primary uh, bone tumor or this bone tumor is a uh, metastatic one. We do image examinations for the patients. And uh, the plan X-ray is the important method of examination of bone tumor, including the chest film. You don't forget that, okay? And uh, uh, we have also other ways like uh, MRI and CT, DSA, the ECT, or even the PET ECT, or the PET CT. Uh, they have always they have false negative and false positive since. The X-ray can provide four information for doctors. The first one is the position, the site of the bone tumor is. And the second, we could know the tumor inference to the host bone. And the, the third one was the host response to the, bone, the tumor. And uh, the fourth one, the tumor tissue density. And this is a picture. Uh, it's plain X-ray, we see a tumor is here in the distal part of the radio. And uh, uh, this tumor, we, you know, we, we can see from this X-ray, we know the position. Okay, this distal uh, radio tumor. And uh, the tumor inference to the host bone, uh, we, we uh, can see the boundaries between the tumor and uh, her host bone indicating the tumor aggressive. And uh, the third was the host response to the tumor. You know, we, we see this picture, uh, this, this things was the response to the tumor. The host always try to wipe out the tumor, you know, and it's uh, packed away and the, the formation of the fibrous tissue capsule. Uh, fast growing tumor invasion and the, the destruction of the bone capsule of this reaction. But only at one or both ends of the tumor to see this envelope pacemaker. And this was a uh, response to the tumor. And uh, we can also see the tumor tissue density. Yeah, it, it like, it, this one is a tumor, and here uh, we see the tumor tissue density as an abnormal one. Not like the normal cortex or the normal bone. And uh, the tumor tissue density, uh, we can see any uh, density changes in bone of the uh, tissue imaging may suspect that the bone lesion, uh, some tumors were uh, osteolytic lesions, uh, such as giant cell tumor, and some osteoblastic lesions, as osteosarcoma or chondrosarcoma. Uh, we should know the patterns of the bone destructions uh, from X-ray. We have three patterns. The first one was geographic pattern, and the third one was mosquito one, and uh, the the third one was the permeative one. Uh, the pattern of the destruction first we see the ge geographic one. Uh, this picture shows a, a geographic one. Uh, this was a non ossifying fiber and uh, this uh, this kind of uh, pictures can uh, very uh, very frequent occurs in the clinical and uh, the second part was a mass eaten one uh, this picture shows a mass eaten one uh, mass eaten one uh, 
and uh, these areas of destruction with rich bodens it implies more rapid growth and probably it means a malignancy. And uh, we got examples of the mouse eaten always the myeloma and the metastasis bone and uh, the lymphoma and the human sarcoma could be mouse eaten. Okay. And uh, the permittive bone destruction, uh, we define the lesion with uh, the medical worn holes, always we say, and uh, that it can spread uh, through narrow space. It has a wide transition through and implies a, a gravissive malignancy. It can be round cell lesions. Now, this one. This picture shows uh, permittive, permittive bone destruction. And uh, we also have uh, a lot of bones that uh, shows permittive uh, this bone destruction. Uh, maybe uh, lymphoma, uh, leukemia, or the urine sarcoma, the myeloma, and uh, the osteomyelitis, uh, neuroblastoma. Okay. They all uh, permittive. From the pattern of bone destruction, uh, we we can see uh, which one is uh, less malignancy and, and uh, to the more malignant, and whereas the traffic one is less uh, malignant. And uh, we come to the mouse eaten and the permitting one was more aggressive. And uh, posterior osteo uh, per, uh, peri periosteal reactions. And that one means the host response to the bone tumor. Uh, in the benign tumors, it could be non periosteal reactions, or it can be a solid uh, one. And uh, more uh, aggressive or malignant tumors in, in this kind of sense, we can see the uh, very counteracting uh, periosteal reactions. Uh, for example, there laminated or the onion peel and uh, the sunburst, the Coleman's triangle. The periosteal reactions, and this picture shows uh, a non ossifying fibroids. Uh, we know this was a benign tumor and it has non periosteal reactions. And uh, uh, the periosteal reactions could be solid one uh, uh, in the benign tumor. Uh, like this picture shows a chronic osteomyelitis, and this was a solid, a solid one. Okay. And uh, in the uh, malignant tumor, uh, for example, in the urine sarcoma, this picture shows a urine sarcoma. It, it has uh, laminated or onion peel. And uh, this picture shows a sunburst. Sunburst. This was a colon. This is a colon triangle. Uh, this picture is osteosarcoma. They all malignant tumors. And uh, we should focus on the tumor matrix. Uh, we know the osteoblastic uh, could be the uh, the one kind of the matrix. And it was uh, fluffy, it became cotton like or cow like uh, densities. And uh, it always happens in osteosarcoma. And uh, we should know the catchy uh, radicals and uh, the common shaped, uh, the pancreate and the annual uh, popcorn like uh, that kind of uh, tumor matrix. Was always the indoor chondroma and uh, the chondro sarcoma or chondro myodoxyphile fibroma. <coughs> the tumor matrix and this picture showed, showed osteoblastic one. Um, this all osteoblastic, you, you can see the density is very, uh, it's highlighted in x ray. Uh, it's here is also highlighted in x ray. Um, that means the osteo plastic one. And uh, uh, tumor can be uh, uh, cataracnous, that means kind of like a crowd, uh, like cottons, and that was uh, chondrosarcoma. 
express a religion to God. Uh, for example, this picture shows uh, Mahatma Maya Luma. Um, it's really used to have uh, expansive religion, expansive religion. And uh, we have a mess, and it's a, it's a renal cell uh, carcinoma. And uh, this was a brown tumor. A brown tumor, you can, you can see in the finger, this brown tumor is here. And it's also expensive lesion, so we want this bone is uh, like this. And uh, this also uh, expensive uh, example was uh, in control. In control. Uh, we also got uh, any tumor bone cyst. And so bone cyst is, uh, is quite big here, it's expensive uh, lesions of bone. And we got a fibrous dysplasia. This picture shows the humerus have uh, fibrous dysplasia and was expensive lesions so on. Okay, now uh, last uh, going to discuss the characteristic of the locations. Uh, first, uh, we have you know, the three different locations in the rhombus, and that was uh, epiphyseal and uh, the metaphyseal and the diaphyseal one. Uh, in the epiphyseal 